Hi, I'm Chef Jamie Vincent Bordenero, and this is Pursuit of Passion, where I share with you mouth-watering recipes, tips, and techniques to give you the tools to create memorable meals for you and your loved ones. For today, we will see the continuation of the process of our beautiful organic chicken breasts. We're going to pan roast them. We are going to make a beautiful pan sauce with that beautiful homemade chicken stock that we did in our technique episode. And we also have some beautiful Brussels sprouts that we will roast with a little bit of brown sugar and make them caramelized and have a nice salty sweet balance. In addition to that, we have some gorgeous organic baby carrots that we will braise in carrot juice, intensifying the flavor even more so. And serving as our aromatic base to this wonderful chicken dish is basmati rice, which we will cook nice and tender and fluffy and delicious. Let's cook. All right, let's take a look at our ingredients for this beautiful chicken dish. Our chicken breasts, one is supreme with the bone showing, and one is simply deboned completely, both air dried, ready to be seared crisp. And here is our spice blend for this dish. It is a mixture of one part ground cumin to one part ground coriander seed. The cumin will be a nice bridge to pair well with the carrots. And the coriander adds a nice depth to the dish, as well as a little bit of an aromatic appeal. And our Brussels sprouts, perfect for the end of our winter season. We are using basmati rice, a long grain aromatic rice. I'll show you how we get that cooked up really deliciously. Aromatics, onion and garlic to go into the rice. And of course, we've got to have some plug grub butter to enrich the components of this fantastic feast. The fresh chicken stock that we made, which will be great for our sauce. We have some beautiful organic baby carrots, along with fresh carrot juice. Cooking them in the juice will absolutely add to the depth and richness of the dish. And fresh ginger, which is not only a perfect pairing for carrots, but will add a nice complexity to the overall plate. We have fresh chives, which will be sliced super thin as a nice garnish, but will also add to the lovely allium notes to the dish. And we're ready to start cooking. Let's start out with our beautiful roasted Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, brown sugar, that's light brown sugar, salt, of course, and some canola oil. To clean our Brussels sprouts, we'll take our chef's knife and very simply cut off the root end, which would be very unpleasant to bite into. But we're not cutting too far up the Brussels sprout as we want most of the leaves to stay intact. We're going to remove any leaves that are kind of lingering or hanging off because once they roasted, if they happen to become separate, it would be very chewy and potentially burnt, which we don't want. And then we're just going to slice right down the middle through that core, making sure to keep both sides intact. And we have our beautiful cleaned Brussels sprouts with no loose or hanging leaves. We'll just arrange our sprouts on this foil lined baking pan and continue that process until we have our sprouts fully cleaned. And once we have our sprouts laid out evenly, have them cut side up so that they'll get nice even caramelization, simply dress with 
the canola oil and season liberally with salt and roast them in that 375 degree oven for approximately 10 minutes until cooked through and browned evenly. And let's get going on our braised baby carrots. We have our organic baby carrots, carrot juice, ginger, chives, and kosher salt, of course. And not to mention plugra butter to finish it all off. Now, our baby carrots. Here we go. The greens are fantastic. It tells you a lot about their quality. Uh... In this case, though, we are just going to simply chop them off. Next up, it's time to break out that vegetable peeler. We're going to go ahead and take one method here where we hold it against a surface and peel one side, then go back and carefully trim off what we missed on the bottom edge. Nice and efficient way to do it. When you're faced with a little bit more of a delicate carrot, you can give it a little bit more stability by holding it in your hand. Just be a bit more careful about those fingertips. And this way also works while giving the carrot enough grip and leverage to prevent it from snapping. And now we have all of our carrots peeled. We're going to trim off those tiny little ends that would become overcooked and provide a very unpleasant texture. And now we are ready to cook. Let's get our ginger ready that we will use to infuse the carrot braise mixture. I like to break down the ginger into peelable, functional, usable pieces that we can easily use our chef's knife to go around the curvature of the ginger and just simply peel off the skin as you would with a citrus fruit. If you have a very good peeler, you can also use that. I just like to cut right through all the nooks and crannies of the ginger root. Then we just slice it into pieces that will help to infuse its flavor into the liquid. With the help of plugra butter and kosher salt, along with the fresh carrot juice, we're ready to start cooking our beautiful braised baby carrots. Let's cook. All right, so we have our sauce pot. We're going to get it to a medium-high heat. Throw our carrots right in along with a generous tablespoon of plugra butter and kosher salt to begin sweating the carrots and also to add a layer of seasoning we're going to go right away with our ginger to give it ample time to infuse its beautiful aromatic flavor into the ultimate braise it's important to keep our carrots evenly spread out in the pan so that they cook evenly at the same time And once our butter is foaming and we start sweating the carrots slightly, we are ready to add in our carrot juice, which we will add in to cover the carrots about three quarters of the way up and bring that to a nice simmer. We'll add another layer of seasoning in the form of kosher salt. Meanwhile, while the braise is simmering away, let's work on our sliced chive garnish. You want a really, really sharp chef's knife in order to correctly slice through your chives. Take a small, manageable portion of chives. Doing one a full bunch could make it a lot more difficult. And the first cut is to even out the chives so that we're ready to make beautiful little chive slices let's get a close look 
and it'll be a simple slicing motion. We are not pressing down on the chives with the knife, which would bruise them, but we're simply slicing right through and creating these beautiful light rings of chive. Picture perfect. As our carrot braise reaches a heavy simmer, we lower the temperature just a slight bit and let's give them a test to see if they're cooked through yet. They're slightly tender on the outside, but we're gonna give them a bit more time so that they're nice and tender on the inside as well. And once we can see that our braising liquid has reduced and become a lot more viscous, the flavor is more concentrated, we'll give them another check to see if they're cooked through. And now that the carrots are cooked, we will remove them from the pan so that they don't overcook, but then we will continue to reduce that braising liquid to turn it into a really nice, beautifully flavored, concentrated sauce. And once our braising liquid has reached a caramel-esque nappe texture, which will be perfect to coat the outside of the carrots after we sauce them and plate them, we're gonna go ahead and actually toss our beautifully braised baby carrots in that glaze to give them a perfect even coat and continue to enhance that delicious flavor. Next up, we're ready to cook our basmati rice. Here we have basmati rice, long grain aromatic rice, onion and garlic as our aromatic base, and our fresh, delicious chicken stock that we made in the previous episode also of course our spice mix one-to-one -one, ground coriander and cumin and kosher salt start out with our aromatics small dice on the onions you know the drill Within the basmati rice, you can use a strainer, a mesh strainer, such as the one 
that I am using to rinse and drain the rice or a colander or whatever you have on hand that will prevent it from becoming clumpy and dense and not as light and fluffy as we are looking for. So we'll take our medium sauce pot and get it over a medium high heat and drizzle in a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. It's time to sweat those aromatics, onions and garlic. We'll add in a healthy pinch of kosher salt to begin that process. And to start the foundation for a layer of flavoring and seasoning, we'll add in as well our one-to-one -one ratio of ground coriander and cumin. Once the onions and garlic become translucent and are fully sweated, we can add in our chicken stock. We'll go ahead in with our basmati rice and bring this up to a simmer, cover it, and in about 15 minutes or so, we should have some beautiful, aromatic, fluffy basmati rice. All right, let's get to it. We've got our beautiful chicken breasts air dried, ready to be crisped up in the pan, some kosher salt over the top nice and evenly, and we'll season with our one-to-one -one spice mix of coriander and cumin. Flip the birds over and we'll get the flesh side so that we have even seasoning. Again, kosher salt and our spice mixture of coriander and cumin. And of course, it's important that after we season, we flip them back over to allow that skin to air dry so it gets nice and crispy in the pan. Get our pan over medium to medium high heat. Add canola oil. And once your oil is nice and hot but not smoking, we can lay our chicken breasts right on in carefully to do it away from you so that the oil doesn't splash in your direction and we're looking for a nice deep golden brown i was applying pressure a little bit there uh, in order to make sure it's evenly cooking and evenly browning that chicken skin and sometimes if your pan's a little uneven or your stove happens to be a little uneven you can always tilt in different directions to make sure that the oil makes contact with the chicken breast and now that we have a nice deep golden brown color, we're gonna flip the chicken breasts over and start to cook the bottom side of the breast. This will help reduce cooking time and create a nice uniform texture. And then we'll simply transfer those chicken breasts to a roasting pan with aluminum foil, pop them in that 375 degree oven for about eight to 12 minutes until they're cooked through. In the meantime, it's time to make our pan sauce. We're going to discard the excess oil and then deglaze our pan with the delicious chicken stock that we made in the previous video. Add a little kosher salt for seasoning and begin to reduce this stock. And to add another layer of depth to this sauce, we're adding in some more carrot juice as well as our one-to-one -one spice mixture of cumin and coriander. Once the stock has reduced and you can see the bubbles are getting larger and telling us that our liquid is much more concentrated, let's go ahead and transfer our sauce into a sauce pot that will be more appropriate for emulsifying the butter in. And go ahead and bring that reduced sauce to a simmer and we can add in our plugra butter. Take a whisk, whisk it in thoroughly. We can do this off the heat if the pan is nice and hot and you can actually get a better emulsion as long as the sauce is not boiling because once you start to boil that sauce, 
it will tend to want to separate on you. So go ahead and finish whisking that butter in to emulsify it thoroughly off the heat. And let's give it a taste. Well balanced, well seasoned, that's a delicious sauce. And now let's go ahead and take a peek at our beautiful basmati rice. And as you can see, it's aromatic, it's steamy, it's fluffy. Let's go ahead and use a fork to fluff it up to lightly maintain the structure of the grains. And well, of course, we give it a taste. Absolutely ethereal. This week's sommelier selection, we have a Kumu River Estate Chardonnay from Auckland, New Zealand. It's one of the best Chardonnays around. This one is from 2021. It has a great citrus note to it and some minerality a medium body, and it has a creamy texture to it that will stand up to our rich chicken preparation. And a big thank you to Eric over at Tilted Bottles in West Hartford for procuring this fantastic selection to go with the chicken dish. Thank you for your expertise and hospitality. Gorgeously roasted chicken breasts ready to go. They're well rested. We'll flip them over onto the skin side so that we're not sawing through that beautiful crispy skin and tearing it apart and slicing all the way through and being very careful to lift it onto its upright side so that the skin does not steam. And as you can see, crispy skin, beautiful moist interior. That is a delicious juicy bird and for our boneless chicken breast we will slice it vertically for presentation's sake and as always the plate up is up to you you've done all this hard work feel free to use your creative freedom to plate and present the dish however you feel you would like to do so. Thank you all so much for the support. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel if you really enjoy the video. Thank you all so much. And as always, please be well on your pursuit of passion. Cheers.